It's been a busy year in SEO land with more algorithm updates than you can shake a stick at. The search engine results pages are unrecognizable. Google My Business gets sexier each and every day and conversational search is on the up as we're able to use pretty much every device in the house to browse the interwebs. So how can us lowly small business owners, bloggers and e-commerce store owners prepare for the year ahead? Can we peer into Google's crystal balls and see what they have in store? Well, today I'm talking to SEO guru Cyrus Shepard about what we should expect for search in 2019. So if you want to get ahead of the competition, this is the episode for you. Hello, my name is Kate Toon and I'm head chef here at the Recipe for SEO Success, an online teaching hub for all things search engine optimization. And I love SEO. And today I'm talking with Cyrus Shepard. Hello, Cyrus. Hi, Kate. Hello. Good to see you. I've got your little bio here, but maybe you can tell us who the hell you are and what you do. Oh, gosh. Well, I loved your <laughs> intro about yourself. Uh, I, I also love SEO. Uh, I started learning SEO uh, about eight years ago when I was making websites, and I didn't know how to market them. I didn't know how to get them in front of people. And so I started just learning everything, you know, like, can I, should I pay for ads on Google? Should I do social media? Uh, and then I found this thing called SEO, and I fell in love, and I found the career for the rest of my life. Um, because I love it when people come to you and want something. And that's what they're doing with SEO. They're typing something into a search and they're looking for something. So if you can solve people's problems uh, by, through SEO, you can, you can have a great business. And um, I, I'm not telling you about myself, but why I love SEO. <laughs> well, I think that was a beautiful explanation of why you love SEO. I've got your bio here for everyone anyway, just to explain why I have you on the show, because I've been following you for what seems like forever. So Cyrus runs Zippy, an SEO company that publishes content, does consulting, and works on software. Formerly, he was head of SEO and audience development at Moz. He is a speaker and conference MC and strives to make complex SEO equations easy to understand which is perfect because that's what I try to do too. So thanks again, Cyrus, for being on the show. Um, So let's get stuck in. We're going to talk today about what's happening in 2019. But before we do that, let's take a little look back. It's been a big year, 2019. It feels like a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. uh, uh, Every time you think that uh, things have settled in, uh, the internet changes again and there's always something new to learn. It is. And that's the beautiful thing about it. It's exciting. Some people find that depressing, but I just think it's a good old challenge. Um, (laughs) So one of the big things that's been mooted by your old work colleague, uh, Rand Fishkin, is that branded search is going to be huge in 2019. What do you think of that? And what do you think that really means for small business owners? Well, I think it's I think it's important, but I, I also think it, it's a particular challenge for small business owners. So just to be clear what we're talking about, branded search is when people are specifically looking for your business, uh, whatever it's named. It can, you know, Moe's Garage or um, a Safeway Grocery Store, as opposed to just looking for a generic term like car mechanic. Branded search, when we study this, uh, we see that there's a, there's a huge correlation between uh branded search and organic search traffic, meaning if people are actually looking for your business, you're generally getting a lot of organic search traffic anyway. Uh, So a lot of people like Rand, like my colleague Rand, uh, theorize and believe that if you can increase your branded search, you're going to win organic traffic all the way down the road. Uh, for small businesses, this can be kind of challenging getting your word out, but it also it also gives you a specific strategy to go after, uh, getting people to look specifically for you and raising your visibility. Yeah. I mean, I think that what they're saying is it's just getting harder and harder to rank for what you do and easier to rank for who you are. So it yeah. is, but building that whole brand awareness thing and, and being a bit clever, like you're seeing these days on ads, people are more searching instead of here's our URL, hey, try searching brand name in Google to find us or try searching product name in Google to find us and just yeah. encouraging people to put your name into the search engine. Um, however, you can do that. Right. And that goes into another point that's not specifically related to brand search, but something we're seeing in 2018 uh, is the is the rise of reputation Mm -hmm. in in search. So if what Google is what we think 
Google is doing is looking at your business's reputation across all the websites that mention it. And this could be local review sites. This could be Google reviews. This could be other websites that talk about you. So it's important to have, it's important for your brand to have a good reputation uh, in, in today's search environment. And do you think citations matter here as well? So that whole correlation between, you know, I'm a, my name's Kate Toon. And if my name is mentioned enough around the word copywriter or copywriting or SEO course, that that correlation is starting to come together as well. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, it's, and we're also seeing that the words that people use in their reviews matter a lot too. So it's not just, it's sometimes it's not just enough if people leave you a good Google review or, uh, or, or a Facebook review or something like that. The words that they use in the review, uh, you know, Kate Toon is an awesome copywriter. You know, they're looking at that sentiment analysis to, to see who should rank and who shouldn't. Oh, I love that sentiment analysis. And that's a great argument for something that I teach on the course, which is if you want a testimonial from someone, send them a little example of how they could write it. Because most people struggle to write testimonials. So if you give them a little template to use that maybe has some little phrases in there, you could actually be doing yourself a bit of a Google favor as well. So that's a great tip. Absolutely. Very smart. Um, so branded search, I mean, getting your name out there, that's a whole episode in itself. But um, we're just saying that, you know, the more people that are typing in your brand name into Google, the better. Now, another thing that's talked about a lot, it's been, it's been talked about for ages, but they're saying the importance of it is going to be bigger in 2019 is schema and structured data. What do you think uh, this that has to play in 2019? Well, I think I think we're going to see some big changes over the next year in schema. Right now, uh, we always tell people put put schema on your website, mark up mark up what you can, especially your business name, your social profiles, things like that. But there's a lot of confusion right now. Exactly what should be marked up. There's so many schemas out there. And I think we're going to see some more guidance from Google around this issue. For small businesses, I, I think it's definitely important to mark up your local information, you know, your address, phone number, contact information. Uh, but also events is a big one. If your store is having a sale or uh, anything like that, there are special event markup that you can use and look up uh, because that's a big one. And it's an easy way to, to win a bit of uh, real estate in the search results. Yeah. And obviously for e-commerce, it's fairly easy these days to mark up price and availability. Oh, absolutely. I think I think there's a, we have a couple of episodes on the podcast about schema. If you want to look back through iTunes and find them, we did one recently with, with Dido and one a while ago with Tony McCreef. Schema, though, is still something that confuses the heck out of small business owners. And the implementation of it, even with a simple WordPress site, can be quite challenging. So hopefully oh. Google will make that easier as well. Yeah, oh, d schema is hard for the big uh, big businesses, <laughs> but uh, generally my advice is mark up everything you can and let Google, Google won't punish you uh, for the most part as long as everything is truthful. Uh, yes. But uh, you know, if you put on if you mark up fake reviews that don't actually exist, you can get yourself in a little bit of trouble. But mark up everything you can, and Google will take the parts that it can use and ignore everything else. That's really reassuring. I'm so glad that everyone else <laughs> struggles with it too. Um, the next thing is AMP. Some people love it. Some people hate it. We had a whole episode uh, about how uh, AMP is, is, is hateful and we should just focus on having faster sites. What do you think about AMP? Is it here to stay? Is it something that we need to be worrying about? So I'm going to admit when AMP first came out for the first, I, I think, two years, I hated it. <laughs> uh, it mostly because it felt like Google stealing our content a little bit. Um, but I, I won't get into that philosophical debate. The truth is that every study we look at, content on AMP performs better in search results than content that isn't on AMP, on average, on average. It's not a magic bullet. So I advise my clients when they can to, to adopt AMP. AMP. Uh, that said, uh, I, think, I think AMP is finally evolving to the point where uh, it's, it's not such a Google-owned thing where it's getting easier to use. It's getting easier to share URLs. It's, you can have your own URL now. Uh, WordPress tools are, are improving for you know, small businesses to get AMP. Yoast Glue is a great tool. Uh, so I do think it's here to stay, and I advise it to use when you can. Uh, some sites are just too small, and they don't get enough traffic to, to justify it. But it, if you can do it, and you can do it easily, I advise people to do it. Yeah. And do you, th do you think it's really relevant for your average small business site or do you think it's more for your kind of news and entertainment sites? Well, it's definitely more relevant to news and entertainment. Uh, the one, one thing I like to like to tell people, if you, a good way to tell if you should use AMP 
is Google the keywords that you are trying to rank for and look at the results on mobile and see how many of the top results are already in AMP. Yeah. Uh, if Google is showing, you know, three or more results in the top 10 that are AMP, that's a pretty good idea that you should be thinking about it. Yeah. Okay. That's great advice. And I think it's not to say that AMP is is the alternative to having a fast site. I think you want a fast site right. as well. You know, it's, it's it, they're not they're not mutually exclusive. They can right. work together. Um, yes. And obviously, as you said, WordPress makes it relatively easy with with the yeah. Google AMP plugin and other plugins. So it's and, not as fast and, as it might seem. And for the record, on my own site, I even though that's my advice, I still don't have AMP on my own site. Uh, yeah. Well, I have it on one of my sites, but I have eight. Eight websites. I'm not. Eight. I know. What am I thinking? I will. I'm going to kill one of them in 2018. That's my big exciting news. Um, so the next thing, everyone's talking about conversational search. Uh, that was a bit of a pun there, but it didn't work very well. Other than writing in the language of their audience and truly answering customer questions, what else can small business website owners do to take advantage of conversational search? That's a that's a very good question. Uh, con- con- a lot, there's a lot of debate in my world about where uh, conversational search is, is going. Uh, what I generally advise people to do right now is is focus on something slightly different, which, which would be featured snippets in regular search. Um, and featured snippets are the, those answers at the top that uh, give you give you a brief answer. Because most of the time, if you are winning those, you are you are winning voice search queries, and you're you're well prepared for conversational search. Um, and the way to win those is, you know, uh, as you said, you know, write in brief sentences, put questions in your in your headings, um, make bulleted lists, uh, try to see what's already ranking, you know, for the for your targeted uh, search queries, and try to do better than that. Yeah, and for those who are not one hundred percent sure what conversational search is, we did an episode a couple of weeks ago with Eric Eng where we talked through that. Oh. I don't really. I don't really think that we need to do anything dramatically different. (laughs) I think it is about using the language that your customers are using. So reflecting back, you know, using the same terminology as your customers are using, maybe being a little bit less formal. Um, As a copywriter, I know that lots of businesses come and they want to sound professional. And they think to sound professional, they need to write super long sentences and use really long words, um, which doesn't necessarily correlate with what people are typing or speaking into the search engines. Um, Now, that leads me into the thing that I was going to talk about next, which is the search engine results pages. What is going on? Every time you look at them, they're different. There's so many elements to them now. They're actually a little bit overwhelming, I find now, don't you? They they are. And it's 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 scary sometimes because uh, in the you know, we think of Google uh, as a search engine and sometimes some of these pages come back and you're like, I I don't see I don't see websites listed here. (laughs) I, I see answers and I see great products and, and images and videos, but you know where where is my website in all of this? So it can be a little scary. Yeah, and I, I mean that's it. Some people are actually sort of saying Google's becoming less of a search engine and more of an answer engine because you mentioned these featured snippets. We also have featured answers. We're getting featured videos, and, yep. and it's, it's like Google's trying to deliver us one great result rather than ten results that we can choose from. You know, it's almost yeah. making the decision for us, don't you feel? A- absolutely. They're trying, they're, they're trying to provide answers for us um, in the easiest way possible. Uh, they're, also, they're also making a lot of money off, off the ads they serve. So you can, you can uh, question their motives all you want. One thing, <laughs> I do advise, one thing I do advise is there is one feature of uh, search results that's continually gaining in prominence and has for the last three to five years. And we expect it to do so even more. And that is video. Oh, um, I, was, I was hoping we were going to get into that. That was my next thing. You're just segueing uh, beautifully. Oh, am I? Point oh, point. dear. You're a pro, man. Yeah. Well, if I, if I had to tell even, and I would say even small business owners um, can, can take advantage of video uh, because I, I think it's an investment that you can make for the future and more and more YouTube. Uh, YouTube is this, Google is the largest search engine in the world. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. So if you have a presence on YouTube and if you it, start making that investment, you can win long term. And that's it with the blended results now. The r- videos are coming through into the, the search engine results pages. And yep. it's back to what you said earlier. It's all the how, when, what, why, where kind of questions. So, you know, if you can reflect the customer language by answering one of those questions, as we said, 
have a little short intro that answers it very quickly that might get pulled into that position zero featured snippet, but then also have a beautiful three minute video that's on YouTube and embedded on your site and you've transcribed it. Awesome. You're kind of really giving yourself the absolute ultimate, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? The absolute choice. Yeah, yeah. Attack the problem from from all angles. <laughs> yeah. So do do the AMP, do the structured data, do the video, and uh, and you'll and you're there. And it brings it all back again, though, that video is one of the ways that really makes that connection between you and the brand. So back to that branded search, like you know, I can watch. 17 videos on how to implement structured data. But the one I'm going to remember is the, the guy that's kooky or fun or he's, you know, and then I might watch more of his stuff and I might type his name into Google again. So it's kind of all circular, yeah? It's all building that, you know, expertise, authority and trust that we're trying to all work on. Yeah. And, and video makes such, when you, video can make such a strong, memorable impression because uh, for branded search, as we were talking about at the top of the show, uh, people are going to remember who they see in a video. They're going to remember the brand name who they see in the video. Uh, so it can strengthen those brand relationships uh, a little bit more. It really can. And, and I mean, this is slightly off, off script, but as I was saying, I've been following you for ages and the main place that I follow you is Twitter. Now, obviously Twitter's great, but it's pretty limited. And, you know, some people are very good at the little pithy tweets, which I think you're very good at, but this is the first time I've kind of seen you in the flesh making this little, and you're not at all how I expected you to be. Like it, it's really different. And oh, well, that's, that's why I use a cartoon avatar. <laughs> yeah, no, it, in a good way, in a good way. But it just shows that you, you think you've built this connection, because you can, but you can only do so much with words. And I'm a copywriter, and I know that. But getting your face out there, getting your voice out there through podcasts, making videos, and also Facebook Lives. Like we have the technology in our smartphone now to make a pretty decent Facebook Live video. And then pull that down and pop that on YouTube. There's just so many opportunities now. I really do think video is going to be huge next year. If yep. you're brave enough to not use a cartoon avatar and get your face. No, no. The great thing about the cartoon avatar, I never have to change it, Kate. It's, it's good for 50 years uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm bald. It's kind of, you know, it's, it's just me. Well, that's it. I have a cartoon avatar as well. And for ages, he was way hotter than me because he was like slimmer and whatever. And now, now I'm hotter than my avatar because I've lost a bit of weight. But uh, anyway, there you go. So, oh, congrats. Thank you. So we've talked about AMP. We've talked about branded search and schema. But one of the things that you mentioned before we were talking about the show is you mentioned the importance of site architecture. What, 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 what did you want to touch on there? Well, site, ar site architecture, it's one of the specialties of mine. Site architecture just means the way that your website is structured through links. Um, and this is ter I see a, I see all types of websites make mistakes with this, with choosing what they put in their navigation and how they link their pages together. And generally they, they, either don't link the important pages or they make them hard to find or they don't include enough links for, for the visitor within the pages themselves. So generally when I work with a client, um, aside from, you know, basic keyword targeting and optimization, site architecture is one of the very first things that we work on and we usually can find ways to make gains through it. For small businesses, if you only have, you know, three, four or five pages, it's not a huge challenge because you're just going to link to them all in, you know, in your navigation. But uh, once you start getting past 20, 30, 40 pages uh, for your business, it becomes a bigger and bigger issue about what you link to. I mean, I see this as a really common problem with e-commerce stores. Having yes really shoddy navigations and not having product-led navigations, instead having things like about and FAQs in their main nav and then having the products somewhere else, like not leading with their product categories. So you, you come in and you barely get an impression of what they sell and then trying to reverse that and link the category pages. It, I think e-commerce stores struggle a lot with it because I think they just, they have so many products and they're not clear how to group them together. Do you find that as well? Oh, ab absolutely. Uh, and, and, Product, uh, product navigation, faceted search uh, navigation are, are huge problems and challenges. And generally, you know, you try to you try to come up with a structure where people can find virtually anything on your site within three clicks. Yes. Uh, but determining exactly what those clicks are is a bit of a, a mixture of art and science. It really is. You kind of have to have a feel for it sometimes, don't you? Teaching, people searching by material or color or brand, it's yeah, it's it's very tricky. Now. One couple of things we haven't talked about, and, and I think because they're, they're staples, I mean, I think speed 
the need for speed is still going to be a big thing in 2019. We all want to be getting our sights down under the three second area if we can, faster and faster. Now we're on mobile first indexing. Um, any other tips around speed? Yeah, well, uh, here's people always ask me uh, about speed, and speed is one of those things that Google will tell you that it only affects the slowest of the slow sites, uh, which I think from a ranking point of view is probably true. Um, but on the other hand, in reality, we always see faster sites ranking, rank, always ranking higher. And I think it's because of user experience. When people come to your site and it's super fast, they're le less likely to uh, click away. Uh, they're more likely to stay on your site, engage, make a purchase or whatever. And Google can read those signals. So a faster site, no matter how fast you already are, it always improves things. Um, so I, I think it's one of those, those great things. Um, uh, I, I'm sorry, I lost the question, Kate. I love speed so much. That, that's the that's the whole notion of dwell time, that Google almost is aware yeah. of how long you spend away from the index before you come straight back and search again. Um, so yeah, I guess the faster the better. But also I think the UX thing is about having an engaging homepage as well, an engaging page when you get there that really quickly affirms what the user was looking for, that the user intent is going to be met. And it's nice yeah. and sticky, maybe a video, maybe some really you know, a really easy to understand navigation so that yep. they're sucked in. And I think UX is, is, is so important and maybe underestimated. We're all focused on getting them to the site and sometimes we forget about what they're going to do when they get there. Yeah. So one of my favorite metrics that I use is uh, time on site. Yeah. And I, I love it when I see my visitors spending more time on the site, not because they're they're having a hard time look, finding what they're needing, but because we've we're giving them so many options that they didn't even know they were looking for. I, I always tell people, it's not enough today to answer the user's query. When people search for car repair, it's not enough just to have a page about car repair. You have to answer their next five questions as well. Um, you know, how much is it going to cost? Uh, what can I expect? How can I make an appointment? Who do I call for trouble? You have to answer all the additional questions so they don't have to go back to Google and search for them. And when you do this right, you can you increase your engagement and uh, uh, you tell Google that this is the site that, that people are looking for and it's answering their query. And so that's time on site is one of my favorite metrics. I love that. And, and one little classic trick that SEO copywriters use to do that is type the first question into Google and then see the other questions that Google spawns in the question box below. You usually get five or six yep. and then and then click on those and you get more and more and more. And if you can incorporate all of those into your page, you've created this mega sticky landing page. Don't worry too much about bounce rate because if someone goes to that and bounces straight out, but they've done what you need them to do, we're happy. You know, we're, they've done everything. That one page was enough for them like a killer landing page. Um, before we finish up, one thing that we haven't touched on is backlinks. And, you know, I know that with all the students on my Recipe for SEO Success course, this is the area that they do struggle with the most, you know, the earning, not building backlinks and finding opportunities. And, and you know, obviously people are questioning whether backlinks have the importance that they used to have. What, what's your opinion on backlinks in 2019 and, and their importance? Well, as scary as it is, I, I think backlinks are as important or more important today as, as they always have been. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that it's I, you know, even I struggle to build links sometimes. Um, I think that the good news is for smaller business, especially especially locally, links aren't always so important. You can you can outweigh links with reviews, um, but I think you still have to. The, the sites that win, the, the work pays off exponentially. Um, getting those sites, creating content uh, that even that even big websites want to link to and reference, it's it's hard work, but it, but it pays off. It really does. Well, I've got some good news for you, Cyrus. I'm going to give you a backlink for this ha! podcast. Okay, so there you go. Um, Ranking city, here I come. There you go, baby. And I think the other thing is that smaller businesses can actually be more successful sometimes because they can really build relationships with other small yes. businesses. Whereas if a big business came to me and said, hey, we'll give you a link, we'll pay for a link, blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, oh, go away. But if a small business is like, followed me and then we have a relationship and we can scratch each other's backs, you know, we're more, it's more convincing when we do it than when a big brand does some wretched black link outreach campaign. Don't you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I always think that, you know, small businesses, their greatest asset are all the other people in their network. Um, and, and leveraging that can, can, you know, lead to big gains.
It really can. Well, look, I think we've given some really, I, th- I feel quite positive about the year ahead now, don't you? Absolutely. It's a great time to be an SEO. People are always saying it's dead, but it's not dead yet, maybe. Maybe 2020 it'll be dead. Who knows? We'll see. We'll Never. Get, we'll get Cyrus back to tell us what's going to happen in 2020. Cyrus, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been brilliant. Oh, thank you, Kate. So glad I could join. Thank you. And and guys, if you want to learn more about Cyrus, um, I'll include links to his various bits and bobs. You find him most on Twitter. He does some very funny little updates on Twitter. So uh, definitely check those out. Um, and just to finish up, uh, if you have questions about search in 2019, feel free to head to my I Love SEO group on Facebook. Um, and as you know, I'd like to finish the show with a shout out to one of my lovely listeners. And this week it's from Claire Gamble. And she says, I took K Toon's SEO course and always listen to her podcast. SEO doesn't have to be overcomplicated and smokes and mirrors. Kate's got a great way of explaining even the most technical aspects of SEO in a straightforward way. I recommend it for small business owners. Thank you very much, Claire. And thanks to you for listening. If you like the show, don't forget to leave a five star rating and review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you heard this pod. Your review will help others find the show and learn more about the lovely and exciting world of search engine optimization and don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode where you can learn more about cyrus check out the useful links and leave a comment about the episode finally don't forget to tune in to my two other podcasts the hot copy podcast a podcast for copywriters all about copywriting and the confessions of a misfit entrepreneur Oh, that's a long outro. Until next time, thank you, Cyrus, and happy SEOing.